All right, Foot Clan, we got a great show for you today. We're breaking down nine more matchups for week two. We'll talk about Cam Newton and OJ Howard in that Thursday night football game. We got some ballers on a budget as well. Do not miss today's episode. Did you know that Spotify can be used in your car? Get all your favorite music now on the road with you and all your favorite podcasts as well. No need to switch between apps. Your Daily Drive is a brand new playlist, a mix of music and news made just for you. It's the best thing to happen in cars since the stereo. Take Spotify for a ride in your car today. Learn more at Spotify.com slash drive. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Da, 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 da. It's going to be a spooky show today. Ooh. You see, it's Friday the 13th, Mike. Oh, I, I had no idea what you were talking about. And, I was just going with and, it. And uh, Jason will be in character throughout the show. Wait, Jason Moore or Jason Voorhees? It's more like Jason Less today mm. because he is more of the... Uh, the ghost of Jason Moore? I will be a pantomime today. He will, he'll need to be on YouTube to really understand the contributions of Jason Moore today because... Whoa! Look, if you have not tuned into the YouTube, Jason, did you... I know you were a theater major. Theater fellow. No, you, that was correct. <laughs> did, you take, did you take official pantomime not classes? Not only did I... I have an award for it. <laughs> no, you do not. <laughs> it's actually, it's, it's not you something I'm proud award? of. It's not something I'm proud of. Not something I wished ever would come up on the show. <laughs> but it is a fact. I so am so his voice I struggling, still getting through an illness. It's taking you a while. You're older than you used to be. It takes a little bit longer, Jason. Every day. Today's jam-packed. We've got uh, we got a quick question, which is pretty much we're going to look at last night's game. A lot of reactions to Thursday Night Football. Got some news. We've got nine matchups to get through. And then we've got ballers on a budget. We've got our FanDuel picks, the best bargain-priced players that we like heading into week two. So It's like flea market for the DFS. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we just want to give you that uh, that sneaky play, that, that low-dollar yes. winner. We also have a fun water bet coming up that you two gentlemen do not know of yet. We'll bring that up when we get there. Okay. Like a, fu <laughs> Wait, a future on. water a bet? A future water and bet. And you know, you know for a fact that I will take it? One of you, yes. Yeah, it's me. It is. Yeah, I know what it's, I know what it's about. <laughs> I know exactly what it's about. So, okay. um, That's ominous for yeah. this Friday the no, 13th. No, I know 100% I know what it's about. We'll leave it at that. We'll tease it. It will come up. And then, once again, I will water you, just like I did this last week. That's how these things work. It is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Woo! I will say I should be more trepidatious about doing a deal with the literal devil. Based on the voice that you, you propose this thing, I'm concerned. Uh, the mime of the year, Jason Moore. Foot Clan Friday, today's winner, Jimmy Sai won a $55 <laughs> gift card to shopballers.com. Congratulations. Every Friday, we want to say thank you to the Foot Clan, everybody supporting this independent podcast at jointhefoot.com, the world's greatest fantasy football community, the best people. Scientifically uh, accurate. Yeah, we've had them DNA tested. They are the best people yes. on earth, uh, genetically speaking. Well, I mean, we, <laughs> one of our proud sponsors often is 23andMe. And That's we, true. We figured it out. We did a bulk test. You That's, can get a big discount over 10,000 Foot Clan members. One of their questions is now, do you listen to the fantasy footballers? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, you can find us on Twitter, at the FF Ballers. If you want to watch Mike Wright tilt about Cam Newton, you can go to Twitter at FF Hitman. Jason at Jason FFL. He can type better than he can speak this week. And you can find me at Andy Holloway. The website's thefantasyfootballers.com. And you can find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash thefantasyfootballers if you want to see Jason's uh, corpse sitting in that chair. Now, I appreciate that you have, uh, you know, Jay Grizz wasn't available. He's very busy. And you decided you would step in and uh, show up for work today. So, I mean, that's... <laughs> 
Congratulations. It's always a good thing. So let's talk about this Thursday night football game. Tampa Bay wins it. Came down to the wire. Had the exhilarating fourth quarter score of three to two <laughs> in this game. This is a baseball game? And the big headlines from this game are the performance of Cam Newton, yep. OJ Howard, yep. and I'll say Mike Evans. Okay. Because of expectation, right? Everything, everything, all your reactions are proportioned to expectation. Nobody cares if that OJ Howard gooses if he's an undrafted tight end. He wasn't. Right. He was a fifth, sixth round guy. Big play, talent, ability, high draft capital. Fantasy owners everywhere are tilting beyond belief today. So let's start there. Sure. He may as well have stayed at home. He OJ Howard was not involved in the offense. Not in the passing. Not game. in the passing. I mean, game. He's he's still involved in the offense. And this is OJ Howard was a very difficult case over the off season because there are tons of stuff in his favor. I mean, he's his athletic profile is off the charts. His his yards per target, yards per reception are extremely high. We've seen him be explosive. But you had so you had all that. You have the potential breakout, but then you had to weigh that against the the coaching narrative that Bruce Arians doesn't use a tight end in his system. He doesn't feature one, and we have a lot of Bruce Arians' offensive schemes that we've seen that. And then the argument for OJ's well, Bruce Arians has never had a player like OJ Howard, a tight end of that caliber. So where in that narrative were people falling? Like clearly, people well, bought in. Because he was a fifth round pick, it just I'm trying to set the table for why OJ Howard was so difficult to gauge. If you look at Pat Thorman tweeted this, so this will illustrate what's happening with OJ Howard right now. His snaps have actually spiked. He's on the yes. field 85 percent of the time compared to 61 percent last year. He's running a route on only 40 percent of the plays. He ran a route on 60 percent of the plays last year. He is simply run blocking, pass blocking more often than he was last year, and he's not being targeted, obviously, by Jameis Winston right now. And so here we are with the O.J. Howard experience. Tight ends, you know, I can't imagine that there's many fantasy owners out there with the patience to keep O.J. Howard moving forward. Would you agree with that, Mike? And what would I, you say to those fantasy owners? I, I was... I, I have some shares of O.J. Howard because over the off season there is... Like I have to allow room for being incorrect, but I fell. If if you followed the show all the offseason, I was more concerned about Bruce Arians has never used a tight end, and right now I'm taking the L on on, on the leagues where I bought into the the hype that OJ Howard could really break out. I, I man, like I, do you just flat out drop OJ Howard? I from the leagues where I have him. I picked up uh, in my money league. I had OJ Howard. I played him. I got the zero. So I'm I'm pained with everyone else listening to the show. I have TJ Hawkinson, the the yet to be nicknamed TJ Hawkinson on my bench. Assuming he shows up in any kind of capacity, OJ Howard will be on my bench for the foreseeable future. If you future. have TJ Hawkinson, if you have a better option to that you believe could be a year round, you know, a year long solution, what you were going to roster two tight ends? At least for one more week. It's very hard. Yeah, it's and, really hard to throw the talent on a fifth round pick. And it, we're a little bit in the future here, but I want to get people, uh, give them some hope because maybe you had you held on OJ Howard, you didn't go in on Waller, Hawkinson, Mark Andrews, three real juicy prime tight ends that you could pick up and stash, and you're like, ah crap, there is literally nobody on my waiver wire here. Like I would pick up Eric Ebron. I would. That's what I'm saying. I'm a week too early. But next week you'll be able to pick up Chris Herndon. Mm. If, look at what Ooh. look at what Ryan Griffin is doing. Ryan Griffin has are, ran more s routes in Week One for than, the Jets than OJ. Yeah, and this was compliments of good friend of the show JJ Zacharyson. He pointed out Ryan Griffin man ran more routes in Week One than OJ Howard has combined in his two weeks. Like. Herndon is going to be a featured part of that passing attack. So at least have well, Quincy and Nunez out now. You have got, some yeah. hope, but. Once Herndon is suspended for the first four weeks of the it's season. It's a great reminder. That could be the pivot for a lot of these O.J. Yes. Howard owners since they missed out on Andrews or Waller. Hunter or Henry owners. Hunter Henry owners. Sure. I asked a question last night on, on Twitter. said, are you running away from Cam Newton after this performance? It was 24 for 50, 324 and zero. 
he has negative two rushing yards on the season. 89% of 19,000 of you said far away. They're running far away. Only 11% of you wanted to believe that this was, uh, I guess you would say, recovery pains for Cam Newton coming off the shoulder, coming off the foot. If you listen to Ron Rivera's po uh, post-game press conference, he was just slamming down any question related to the foot. He said his foot is 100% fine. Big fat liar. That's the uh, your official uh, yeah, look, answer, right? You are – my official statement to – them being so adamant and like getting angry at the questions as Cam Newton fully healthy, like you're big fat liars because you should at least you should have the numbers that when Cam Newton runs, your team wins. When Cam Newton doesn't run, the Panthers do not win. I don't have the numbers in front of me. I'll try and find them, but it, like it was, I saw a stat this morning where it's okay in games where Cam Newton runs the ball under five times. They win 30% of the time. Like They don't win. Cam Newton's superpower, the way that he can change a football game, is by running the ball because he's he's a different type of quarterback. If he's just a pocket passer, you saw last night he threw the ball 50 times. The yardage is, is nice, but he completed 24 of his passes. He's going deep uh, infrequently. Every once in a while it's happening, but... If Cam Newton is a pocket passer, the Carolina Panthers are in trouble. He also should have had about 16 interceptions last night. And the 11% in your poll, Andy, the 11% that said that they are not running away, they did not watch. They did not like, watch the game. It was rough. It was impossible for me to watch that game and say, and this is, you know, Cam was a, was a my guy. He is someone that on paper coming into this season has always been a dominant fantasy asset. But he looked broken. He he didn't look like he could do what he has always done in both phases of the game. Now, there were three players in the receiving game that had over 80 yards. Curtis Samuel, DJ Moore, Greg Olson with the 6 for 110 coming off of the will he play, won't he play situation. I believe I saw this morning uh, that 124 out of 136 experts had O.J. Howard over Greg Olson in this game. And I don't blame them. It just did not oh, yes. pan out well one of them Christian is, McCaffrey had a dud of a game 16 for yeah. 37 after a monster week one it was only targeted well he was targeted six times but he only caught two passes you're gonna see that uh pretty much throughout Cam Newton's 24 for 50 night but Mike you are in the 89 percent are you running 100%. far far away from Cam Newton 100 percent I will you release him I probably will okay yeah it, and this is like why, why I'm calling them big fat liars is because I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt of saying Cam Newton is not washed. Cam Newton can still be a good quarterback in this league, and I I believe either he is hurt or this is this is the beginning of the end for Cam Newton's reign in in the NFL. Much better performance from Jameis Winston last night. Sixteen for twenty five, two hundred eight and one. I don't mean for fantasy. I mean, as an NFL quarterback, didn't throw an interception, took a few sacks, but avoided the the kind of turnover problems that had plagued this team. They were right on the edge of winning in week one. They steal this game in Carolina. Better performance. Now, Godwin, eight for 121 and, and one. Sensational game. Mike Evans, four for 61. And then uh, you had, you know, basically that was the, the passing game. There were only 16 receptions by the offense. My thought on Godwin and Evans briefly is th there are those of you out there panicking on Mike Evans. I don't think that that is the appropriate way to approach his situation. At 61 yards receiving, he was targeted eight times. Gar uh, Godwin was targeted nine times. Godwin gets the ball closer to the line of scrimmage frequently. Evans downfield, and you know they missed him on a touchdown throw in the first quarter. I'm not panicking in any way, shape, or form about Mike Evans. You could make the argument that you know the possibility of him being like the one and Godwin the two, maybe that doesn't work. Maybe it's a 1B, one 1B, B, one B, if that makes sense. Okay, so let me ask you this. If you you have Chris Godwin on your team right now. Would I trade him straight up for Mike Evans? Exactly. Uh, I choose not to answer. No, uh, <laughs> I think uh, – I have Mike Evans. I don't think I would, no. Yeah, I would not either. There's a difference between being panicked about Evans, moving on from Evans, and 
changing your expectations for him. And I, it's more like an enforcement of like Godwin's showing out. Godwin is a very reliable. He caught eight of his nine targets. And the truth is that one on the sideline, you know, if you go to the replay, I think that one comes back a catch too. The one down the sideline uh, off the goal line, if he challenges it. So what's, Godwin's sure handed and I think he's moved up and they're one, a one B what's wild to me is this is the offense that Bruce Arians ran in Arizona. Larry Fitzgerald was the slot wide receiver. He was the one who would have the safe games. He like, he would put up these lines, nine targets. He would catch the ball eight times, put up over 100 yards. And then John Brown was the deep threat. Like, Mike Evans is now John Brown. That's a great least, the, way, the way that I have seen these two games and, and then throw in the fact that the tight end is just an afterthought in the passing attack th through two weeks, like, Bruce Arians is who he always has been. Well, let's continue that then. Then Peyton Barber is Chris Johnson in that equation. Last yes. night... Peyton Barber fulfilled the nightmares that I've had about having him and Ronald Jones on a roster. Ian Rappaport reported right before the game, lots more carries coming Ronald Jones' way. Well, he got four. Yeah, and, four more. And um, <laughs> that's a last that week he had 70-plus rushing yards, got four carries this week. Instead, Peyton Barber gets the rock 23 times, scores a touchdown, 82 yards on the ground. And now you don't know who to play, and you can't play any of them. Yes, I, I tend to. I mean, to you and I were arguing that. about Dare <laughs> versus Ronald Jones this week, Mike. <laughs> yes, we were. And on the series show, you were saying you were kind of ready to move on from Peyton Barber. Yeah. And he comes out and gives you this uh, 23 for 82. They just kept going to him over and over again. Yeah. I, I didn't think he looked particularly great. I just think he just he looked like a guy who took 23 carries. And that's classic Bruce Arians. Like, it doesn't matter if his guy looks particularly great or not. If that player fits the mold and does the small things that Arians wants done, he's going to be on the field. I think if if Barber is on your waiver wire, I'm going to pick him up. I'm not going to play him right away, but because it could be a nightmare situation where everything flip flops week to week, or next week you could see Peyton Barber get another 20 carries and be ineffective but still put up fantasy points. All right, we got to get into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Dan Patrick reports that Antonio Brown will not be placed on the commissioner's exempt list. Bill Belichick will not reveal whether Antonio Brown will make his Patriots debut Sunday in Miami. He says, quote, I'm not going to hand a copy of my game plan out here. We'll do what's best for the team. Now, Jason, your eyes opened up. What were you... I had not seen the report that he was not going to be placed on the commissioner's exempt list uh, yet, which means... Well, there's Dan Patrick's reporting this, and that would be for this week. So we the, the NFL's meeting with the accuser next week. So there's the, uh, so this the, is the not NFL a... has not said we're never placing him on the NFL's commissioner's exempt list. Okay, that's how I was taking that when he said he won't be. I, I felt like we already knew he wasn't going on before this week's game. Um. All I know is this Dan Patrick report this morning. Every day it seems to change. We don't know whether he's going to play this week. Mike, you said you wouldn't play him. Do you stick with that opinion? I do, be just simply because I'm uh, like I'm willing to be wrong. If Antonio Brown goes out and plays a full game, goes Hamburglar, I'm willing to be wrong about that because I, th I think the probability is he plays limited snaps. And Patriots coach Bill Belichick also said, because I have to fray – you got to know who I'm talking about with Bill Belichick. He's the Patriots coach. Yes. Uh, he said he's got a long way to go in learning the team's offense as That's well. That generally is the case. So he's also Antonio Brown. So let's uh, get into the injuries. What's it going to be, McFly? <laughs> Are you in or out? Um. All right, Lev Bell, Monday night. The MRI came back clean. He's going to play. Joe Mixon practicing. Yep. If he's practicing on Friday, I think he plays. All right. Uh, some other little ones. Hopkins. <laughs> Always. Tyler Lockett. He returned to limited practice as well, so he's good to go. Mike Williams with the knee. Very concerned. Okay. Very concerned. If you are counting Probably on voting Mike, out right now. Yeah. Sterling Shepard with the concussion. I lean that he's going to be out as well. Marquise Brown with the hip. Plays. Okay. Limited snaps again, or are we going to see a little yes. bit more of him? Yeah, I think a little, little more, but still limited snaps. All right. Uh, let's go on. Jordan Reed. It was trending in a positive direction, but it there is less hope now. <laughs> Trey Burton with the quote of the year. Uh, Trey Burton with a groin injury says, quote, every day is a different day. And some days I feel really good, and some days I don't feel good at all. 
Thanks, Trey. Hmm. Out of my lineup regardless. All right. And the Mark, Mark Andrews didn't actually practice. We don't know why he didn't practice today, but we're surfacing that. We'll talk on Sunday. Mike is, is going to be live with you an hour before kickoff on all of our uh, social media channels, streaming live, answering questions. We'll also have the Foot Clan game day alerts for those of you that join thefoot.com. So we'll keep you in the know with all these injuries. We'll be reacting to them with you. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Do not miss any of the news. In fact, if you have the Sleeper app, you'll probably get an alert about some of the availability of these players uh, before we tell you on Sunday. So yep. uh, grab the Sleeper app. All right, we're going to take a quick second. Thank today's sponsors. I mean, we all know this. Mike, you know this. I know you this. You know I know this. Listen, the best part about kicking back, watching the game on Sunday, we finally got to do it last week. It's enjoying that spread of your favorite treats, and you can take your game day treats to the next level the way we did on Sunday, I should add. And we'll do again. Yes, by adding the brand new M&M's Hazelnut spread chocolate candies to that game day spread. Mm. I love them. Uh, they're incredible. I enjoyed them on Sunday. I will enjoy them every Sunday moving forward. You know what people are like with this chocolate hazelnut spread. They basically eat it out of the jar. Now you just put that inside of M&M's? Upgrade. That doesn't feel fair. No. But it is. It is. So if you love M&M's chocolate candies and you love hazelnut spread, just wait until you try them together for the very first time right inside of M&M's chocolate candies. You can find that hazelnut spread. You can enjoy them on their own. You can dress them up on your favorite treats. You can do so many different things with them, Mike. So many things. I can. I, I tried to juggle them the other day. It worked. Yes, so for, they, they are juggleable. But you can yes. only do it for a minute, and then you end up eating them. And That's it's true. And it's complicated. But look... Try them out. Go hazelnutty. Try the new M&M's hazelnut spread chocolate candies today. And we want to thank Simply Safe for sponsoring today's show. Foot Clan, we know that only one in five homes, they have a home security system because most companies, they're, they're making it too difficult. You don't want to deal with that hassle. All those subscriptions, yeah, those well, month-to-month -month uh, contracts. Yeah, but look. Simply Safe makes it as easy as possible. No contract, hidden fees, or fine print. They protect every door, window, and room with 24 7 professional monitoring for just $15 a month. Simply Safe has won a ton of awards from CNET to the New York Times wire cutter. One thing that truly makes Simply Safe stand out is their video verification technology. When other home security systems are triggered, police often assume it's a false alarm. And the call goes to the bottom of the list, but not with Simply Safe. Our studio is protected yep. by the power of Simply Safe. So if you're all ne'er do wells out there, think again because you're going to get busted. Yep. Simply Safe keeps us protected, and you can protect yourself. Visit simplysafe.com slash footballers, and you'll get free shipping and a 60 day risk free trial. You got nothing to lose. Go now and be sure you go to simplysafe.com slash footballers so they know our show sent you. That's simplysafe.com slash footballers. Fantasy Forecast. All right. We covered it on yesterday's show. The Chargers, Lions, Colts, Titans, Cowboys, Redskins, Seahawks, Steelers, Vikings, Packers, Bills, Giants, those matchup breakdowns were yesterday, so you can click onto that episode if you want to hear us break down those games. Let's start with the Jags and the Texans. This game has a 43.5 point over under. The Texans are heavy nine-point favorites at home, and we get to see uh, whether the secret garden can become Savage oh. Garden. Oh, man. Gardner Minshew. If he does... Yeah, well, then the 90s middle school dances will come flooding back, Mike. <gasps> like a chicken cherry cola, my man. Oh, my gosh. So, Minshew, Watson, nobody's thinking about starting Minshew. No. Watson, not. nobody's thinking about benching him. Correct. Uh, he was sacked six times last week. Are you worried about that? No. I mean, that's I'm worried about it because this is what happens to Deshaun Watson. He was the most sacked quarterback of last year, and you had parts of the season where the dude couldn't get on an airplane because they were he was in life – danger of his something happening to his lungs like he's so worried about his long-term health yes yeah hopefully laramie tunzel can yes protect his blind side this yes. week 
The running backs, Leonard Fournette, he's my start of the week. He's going to see volume. I don't care if he's efficient or not. Uh, yep. Jason said something like that in the offseason. He said he does not care about the efficiency of Leonard Fournette because of the volume. Agreed. I'm in the same boat with him this week. I just think he's going to get so much work. You cannot lean on uh, the secret garden to get you through this game. Maybe. Duke Johnson, Carlos Hyde, where are you guys at? Uh, Duke Johnson is is still a weekly fringe RB2 play. It. It felt like he was getting uh, beat out by Carlos Hyde, but the, the reality is Duke Johnson almost doubled the amount of snaps of Carlos Hyde. Hyde just happened to rip off a couple chunk plays. Meanwhile, Duke Johnson had himself a good game. I mean, he was getting the target volume. He put up almost 100 yards from scrimmage. Duke is, is still a fine play. All right, the wide receivers, uh, are you playing Hopkins and Fuller on the Houston side? Yes, so you're okay flexing Fuller out? Yes. No interest in uh, – now, Kiki could make his debut. Kiki could be out there. We'll – yeah, we'll see. There's also reports that the the team is very, very happy with Kenny Stills, and he will be more involved in the offense. He wasn't really close to a full-time player, but he proved when, – when a player comes down with what should have been a game-winning touchdown in clutch time, the, the team is going to – open their eyes and put them on the field a bit more. D.D. Westbrook, Marquise Lee, D.J. Chark, Chris Conley. Man. I, would you I, rather play Westbrook this week with Gardner or would you rather play Will Fuller? Fuller. Okay. I'm, I'm swinging for the fences with this. I'm still okay playing D.D. Westbrook. Uh, Gardner, at least he showed something in week one. Maybe that wasn't completely a fluke because the team was not prepared to dive into the secret garden just yet. But Didi's the only one of the Jaguar side that I'm willing to play, even with DJ Chark's big touchdown. Not good week one performances from either defense. The Texans without Clowney, without Tyran Matthew. Keep your eyes on this situation because yeah. they may be a, a nicer matchup than they've been in the past. And the Jaguars, we'll see what happens this week. They've got a tough matchup again. They have to start the season against Mahomes and Watson, who are basically the top two fantasy options for people in drafts, and they have to go out and see what they're made of. Now they go on the road. So, you know, starting the Jags D this week, not a smart decision. Not for me. Cardinals, Ravens. This game, wow, the Ravens, 13-point favorites. That puts an implied point total of 30 points on Baltimore's side. The Cardinals just 16.8 points. This game's in Baltimore. Kyler Murray, are you playing Oof. Kyler Murray? Because Lamar Jackson, there's nobody sitting Lamar Jackson against this Cardinals defense last week. They were, you know, they were torched by Matthew Stafford. They gave up 28 fantasy points to him. We like we have Kyler Murray in our sleeper bowl, the the league against Juju and Ninja. And I think that our decision in that league is very similar to what other people have to face. I like Kyler Murray long term. Like, I want him to be my quarterback. And in this league, really the only way that we can pivot away from Kyler Murray is to drop him for someone like Derek Carr, who's in just in a really plus matchup. I, I, We've made the decision, and I back this as well, we're going to weather the storm with Kyler. I think that he can be good enough. I, his ceiling is certainly capped in this one, but the Cardinals are going to have to be catching up. They're going to have to throw it a lot. I think that Kyler is is still a safe play to be close to that 12 mark. I think they're gonna, I think you can get through the game with Kyler. I don't think he's going to destroy your team this week. Yeah, so that, yeah, I agree. You illustrated it perfectly. The long-term value of Kyler is greater than the potential slight upside of a Derek Carr. I mean, you're banking on Derek Carr for a week, which is not a – look, we like him. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> you don't you don't get like – uh, you There's know. no bravery points. No, no. And Lamar Jackson, you're playing – David Johnson. Yep, every week. A lot of excitement for him, you know, being lined up and utilized like he was. This is a Cardinals offense that ran more plays than anybody, you know, on a – I guess you wouldn't say more plays, but you'd you'd say that they were faster the line of scrimmage than everybody last week. 22 well, they seconds also between were more plays. because of the overtime. Right. Mark Ingram looked great last week. He was limited with a shoulder injury on Wednesday, but seems fine. Do you think that he'll be as efficient as he was last week? Uh, close to it. Yes. Yeah. I, I expect to see a very similar game plan 
from the Ravens as they put up against the Miami Dolphins. The secondary for Arizona is very susceptible, so even though he's on limited snaps, I'm okay with the flex of Hollywood Brown. Go, I mean, you got to go for upside every once in a while, and I think that this is a scenario where you can do that, and Ingram is should be safe for his 15 touches. Cardinals gave up the most rushing touchdowns in football last year. The Ravens scored the third most, so opportunity for Ingram to smash again in Week 2. Now, a lot's been made of this resurgence at the end of the game for Arizona last week. They were down 24-6, to six, came back. Kyler ended up at 300-plus yards. And, you know, Cliff Kingsbury said he simplified things in the last quarter. Kyler said they figured things out. To me, he just started throwing the ball to Larry Fitzgerald more often. That's, and the, it that's what out. they figured out. It had been five years. <laughs> get this. It had been five years since Larry Fitzgerald had caught a 40-yard pass. Seems impossible. Which seems, yeah, because that was like, you know, the first half of his career, he was doing it all the time. He became Bruce Arians, a slot guy. Yes. He caught two 40-yard passes in week one with Kyler Murray as they came back in that game. Old man strength. Uh, do you believe that, you know, the, the now learned Cliff Kingsbury will give Larry Fitzgerald more work on a consistent basis? Are we going to see more downfield Larry? I... I don't know if I could buy into that. You're not yet. willing to take that leap. Yeah, I'm not going to go with that leap. I will go with the leap, however, that I'm perfectly fine playing Larry as a wide receiver three in this. It's a really tough matchup, but I think that the volume will be enough for Larry to be a usable fantasy guy. And then you mentioned flexing Marquise Brown. You're comfortable doing that? Yeah, it, uh, comfortable is not necessarily the the right word, but I'm willing to do it, and I am doing it. Uh, our listener league. I've got Lamar. I'm going for upside, man. I'm going with that stack of Lamar and Hollywood Brown. Another great stack would be Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews, Jason's tight end start of the week. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> I mean, I know he, he missed. Wait, wait what? Oh, well, he missed practice. Oh, yeah, 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 so yeah. I'm just saying hopefully he's out there. I think he dominates the Cardinals if he is. Yeah, the Cardinals gave up 24 fantasy points to the, to the Hawk Ness monster last week. Oh, mm. Trying that one out? Just trying it out. All right. It's Let's my see. current favorite. Brooks also brought the tomahawk out. Yeah. So we've got options. Yeah, that's shout out to our writer Jeff. And I'm still I'm still My a fan of Jeff. <laughs> I still like uh, you know TJ Awesomeson from yesterday. So we'll see. We'll see what he does. He needs to earn it. Yes. You don't get here here's the rule. Well, you don't get the nickname till you give me 3 fantasy relevant weeks in a row. Unless you're All Darren right? Walrus. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's fair. He's already got his. <laughs> These are very subjective <laughs> rules. 49ers, Bengals, uh, Cincinnati two-point home favorites. It's a 45-and-a-half point over under. Uh, the Bengals, 49ers game. You know, we saw some really great things from Andy Dalton last week. 418 passing yards, two touchdowns. I know there is a uh, there are a number of people who – Andy Dalton is a very streamable, interesting player this sure. week yeah. at home against San Francisco. And – I, I kind of buy that. I do too. I kind of buy that. It's Once again, this is only it's week one, so it's hard to know for sure, but this new offense, this new Zach Taylor offense for the Bengals, this was different than anything that Marvin Lewis would have done. The game script for the Bengals against the Seahawks last, last week was very neutral. I think that the biggest gap was like four points at, at one point, and Andy Dalton still threw the ball 51 times. Maybe that was a product of Joe Mixon getting banged up and them feeling like they couldn't run the ball. But it also could have been a product of they had great success. 400 yards on over 50 attempts. John Ross was great. Tyler Boyd is, is safe for target volume. So I think, I, I think it's not 50 attempts for Andy Dalton, but a much heavier passing attack is what I expect from the Bengals. If you had Tyler Boyd and John Ross, is there any situation you'd put Ross in there over Boyd? This week, if if I'm staring, Jason shaking his head no. If I'm staring down my opponent and they like, I'm looking at a juggernaut. I would do it. Tyler Boyd has he put up like the most Tyler Boyd stat line last week. He he just kind of he's a he's like Robert Woods light or something. Mm -hmm. You know, he just now that that's a perfect eight example. for sixty no touchdowns. Like I mean, that is that is Tyler Boyd's day. What's so funny is. You know, like every, world's colliding because Zach Taylor is bringing the Sean McVay system, and that's the exact same scenario as if you have Robert Woods and Brandon Cooks, and you're staring down a juggernaut opponent. You can only play one. 
I'm playing Brandon Cooks. Yep. I'm going for the upside. I know that Woods is safer. I know that Tyler Boyd is safer. But certain situations call for certain certain nitro buttons. The, so the yeah. hardship there is just being able to trust John Ross. We, you know, off of the one week that I get it. It's hard to lend my trust to, to I get Mr. It. Ross. But, but twelve targets. It was actually more than that because he drew a PI. The targets are the most interesting part, at least for these couple of weeks before AJ Green gets back. Yes, Joe Mixon. We think he's going to be back out there, so that throws some water on Gio Bernard's spot start here. Is Gio flex worthy to you? And would you flex him this week over I don't know Shady McCoy or Tariq Cohen or Miles Sanders? I don't think I would. Okay, I don't think I would either. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo on the other side. Matt Burita, the starting running back this week. I've got him at RB21 on the week. Uh, Raheem Mostert, the, at maybe a DFS play there or a you know deep flex. If your team's beat up, Raheem Mostert should get more work than anybody will expect or want him to. And then the mystery of the wide receiver core in San Francisco you know, Dante Pettis, Marquise Goodwin, Debo Samuel, Jalen Hurd. No. I will. No, 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 no. I feel like this is the mystery present. You know, in the, uh, in the original Batman, well, not the original, but Michael Keaton's first Batman. Yes. The Joker shows up to Vicki Vale's house. He brings her this lovely present. And then, Oh, I remember this. And then she opens. Like, it's a it's lovely It's a gas present. mask. No, it's, no, th this is when the fist pops out with like the dead flowers and it scares her nearly to death. I'm afraid that that's what the mystery box from the 49ers will be delivering to me. So I'm avoiding them until I actually see that it's a nice bouquet of roses. He, he but, gave her multiple gifts in that movie. That's what I just realized. <laughs> well, he's a, the Joker was a very generous yeah, man. Yeah. So here's the question, because I, I don't think anybody wants to have to start and rely on such a low probability play, but you we still want to roster the the guy that's going to emerge so who is it that you want to be rostering and waiting and seeing is none it of Debo them. Samuel Dante Zero. Pettis I, I will roster none and I will wait for none yeah I lean that way as well because it's if you're poking me saying that you have to answer it uh, it's still going to be Dante Pettis for me I would rather roster Debo Samuel but I would rather I would most like to roster none of them I would like that most <laughs> of all most hurt I would, of all. <laughs> I would play George Kittle, by the way. Yes. Pretty good player. Yes. Um, but we'll see if this 49ers defense looks as good as it did week one against Jameis Winston when they travel into Cincinnati. All right, we've got the Patriots taking on the Dolphins in Miami. 18.5-point line on our Sirius XM Fantasy show yesterday. I had the wonderful privilege of defending the Miami Dolphins I was simply illustrating the fact that I think this line is kind of outlandish. Uh, I have a lot of reasons for that. I would take the Dolphins plus the points if I was a betting person. I have almost, I'm almost positive this is the area where Jason wants to make a bet with me, uh, which I am very happy to do. Oh, wow. This is the bet? So here's the thing. The Patriots have the most outlandish line of all time. This is the, this is the biggest line for a home underdog. In 12 years. I mean, since the 2007 Patriots, and this is not the 2007 Patriots, as good as they looked week one, you know, that, that, that team in 2007 was un, unbelievable. They also didn't cover that line in 2007. And they struggle with the Dolphins in Miami every time they go. That being and, said. And you have, th this is the Bill Belichick treat. Mm -hmm. like, if they flame out in the long term, but we've seen a lot of his – disciples handle him the first time that they play but i want i i like i don't i'm not a, 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 a money, but i want to bet such an outlandish over the top line so i'm gonna move the line to 20 i'm gonna go higher <laughs> water bet jason he would have taken the 18 of, and a half of course he would have that I is want, so unjason of you here let's do this too Andy's almost upset of the week. Now, let me. Yes. First of all, thank you. you Second to, of all, let me contextualize what almost upset means here. I think the Dolphins cover the spread by a decent margin. I think it's a 10 point game, 7 to 10 point game. Tom Brady is 1 in 5 in Miami over the last few years. 
this is a situation where when a line's been this big, 18 of 24 times, when a line's been this big, the you know the team plus the points ends up winning. I just think people don't realize it's a 53-man roster. There's a lot of pride on that team. There's been a lot of trash talked about the Dolphins this week. This is the NFL. It's interdivisional game. So I, I appreciate your and, – and almost upset for the Dolphins, to be clear, is a 10-point loss. That's an almost upset to New England. What brings me great joy of you going with this is – Now, they could win by 40, but <laughs> – Is the fact that, to me, the way I see this game going, I know that technically right now Ryan Fitzpatrick is the starter. Ryan Fitzpatrick is not finishing this game. Josh Rosen will be thrown in again. We'll find out. And that means you are betting on Josh Rosen. No, I'm not. I'm betting on Ryan Fitzpatrick keeping it close in this game. Seven to three after the first quarter. That's what I'm predicting. All right. So, Jason, thank you. We just bet on the – you just got to bet on the Patriots <laughs> minus 20. I just really wanted some action on that line. Yeah. Well, you got it. I think it's going to be – A bloodbath? 50 to nothing. You could have you given him 12 points and he would have taken it. No, he wouldn't. I've watched – I've watched these situations happen over you, and over and over and over again. You are correct in everything you're saying. And I, you know, my outlandish desire to see a 50 nothing bloodbath here is, is, you know, that you're usually right on these things and the history and the data supports your side. So it is important that I think but people. But Tom Brady. I mean, it will feel great to water me. It will. If Tom Brady comes out and it's a 52 to nothing smashing. Yeah. Right? He's my start of the week. I really believe that they are going to hold nothing back. All right. Sony Michelle, if you have him, you I am him? giving you the. You have to play him here. 100%. You've got to do it. Now, can you play James White in this yes. game? Yes. Yes, you can. All right. We've got him at RB21 on the week. Drake and Balage? No, thank you. Uh, put him in the garage. That's yeah. what. Oh, nice. Yeah. Not even can you Drake, the pass catcher. I'd just no thank you at all. Uh, Julian Edelman? Yep. Josh Gordon? Yep. What if Antonio Brown plays? Do you change your thoughts on Josh Gordon? I think that Josh Gordon would be the biggest one impacted. Now, what if Antonio Brown doesn't play? Do you play Philip Dorsett and take a dart throw there? If you believe they're going to win by 600 points, Jason, Probably do you take the Dor D Dorsett dart throw? Uh, if Antonio Brown is not playing, I would be – if I needed to go a little deeper, I'd be fine with Philip Dorsett. He had two touchdowns, great game week one. This is a plus matchup for him, and he's the – He's the third guy. So even though there are great corners that Miami has, they're not going to be focused on Philip Dorsett. Yeah, I can't imagine you don't light up any Patriot that you have that you want to play. You said you wanted action on the game, Jason. You you probably want action with any of your Patriots in this one and just take your shot. The Chiefs take on the Raiders. By the way, I didn't bring up any other Dolphins because come on. Yes, come You're on. You're not playing any other Dolphins. Uh, I, I will just say my no why one, one note here. Uh, was very unfortunate for Albert Wilson. My man, he got knocked out of the game. He ran f five routes. He got four targets. Like the offense, What could have been? The offense was trying to run through him. I'm not saying start him by any means, but keep your eye on Albert Wilson. The Chiefs take on the Raiders in Oakland. This game is a 53.5 point over under. The Chiefs are 7.5 point road favorites. And we like Derek Carr because yes. last two, the last two times... Uh, when he's played home games against Kansas City, 417-yard average, three touchdowns. Or, okay, these were the two games. Yeah. 417 and three, 285 and three. Yes. The Chiefs last week gave up 53 points to, to a, the Jacksonville Anonymous Wide Receiver Club. To a sixth-round cor rookie quarterback. With a heck of a mustache. Oh, it, oh, that I like it. I like his mustache. Last week, Josh Jacobs was uh, – Electric. He was great. He had two touchdowns, 23-plus carries. He's the first running back to do that in over 25 years in their debut. The others were Alfred Morris, LT, and Marshall Falk. Great debut for him. We like Darren Waller in this game on the Raiders' side. Love him. Tyrell Williams. Is he an every week wide receiver, too, in your mind? I don't know about every week, but certainly this this matchup against the Chiefs. I would put him in the every week category. He, he could so. earn it. He, he could, looked great. He did. It wasn't just like the production. Like I actually thought he looked like a guy that can handle the job. Well, and it's it's always nice when you have teams, whether they're great or whether they're mediocre, when there are teams that really only have two or three weapons. You know, I, I think of the Vikings, right? They they might not throw the ball that much, 
But when they do, you know it's either Adam Thielen or Stefan Diggs, and then they've got Brandon Cooks. Here, you've got Tyrell Williams, Darren Waller, and Josh Jacobs, and then nothing. So I, I think Tyrell Williams is safe not because of who he is, the style of play he has, but because of the needs of an NFL team to have a wide receiver one. Now, I'll throw this out there. I think the one concern I would have about Derek Carr, Williams, Waller, is – Built a, it's built on the principle of how does John Gruden win this football game. And the way he wins this football game is up front, running the ball with Josh Jacobs and slowing down the clock. Last week, they were the second slowest pace. They won the game. You don't do yourself any favors putting the ball into Patrick Mahomes' hands as often as possible. So I believe the game plan will be go out and put yourself in a position to not have a huge deficit where Derek Carr has to come back and run, run, run the football. I totally agree. That will be his game plan. <laughs> <laughs> and then after yeah. five uh, minutes, after two drives from the Chiefs, he will turn around and he will shred that game plan and he'll have to keep up. Like Matt Nagy did with his game plan from week one? Yeah. Where he said he's inventing all new plays for yes. week two. Oh, very much looking forward to that. You're playing Patrick Mahomes. Yep. You're playing the Lizard King himself. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, bloody. Your start of the week, Mike. Yeah. Damian Williams, LaShawn uh, McCoy, Nicole Hardman. I am willing to play both running backs. I'm like Damian Williams still got a ton of, of opportunity through the air and a ton of opportunity in the red zone. That could we could see that starting to shift with how good Shady McCoy looked, but I still think that both of them are going to be playable for for now. And like for example, in our league of record, I have LaShawn McCoy. I have Miles Sanders. In this matchup, I'm playing Shady McCoy over Miles Sanders until the until we see a little bit more from Miles Sanders. All right. I don't think they're what about McCall Hardman? I I think he should be owned everywhere, but I'm not forcing him out there this week. Is there any interest in any sort of bet with we me have about a, his production this we, week? We I guess we did the John Ross. Yes. Bet. Okay. I'm I'm content. I am apparently really trying to bet with him over you, and over again. Look, so I, that means you believe that he should I th be started? I think he should be I think he should be started, yeah. I think he should be flexed. No doubt. Uh, so we'll see what happens in that one. Chiefs are going to remain heavy favorites in the majority of their games this year. Yeah. And teams will be playing catch up against the defense that you know you You're going to be able to play catch up. You can against. catch up on. Yeah. Uh, at least put up a lot of garbage time. Like, those are the games where the, if the Chiefs get out ahead and you have Derek Carr sitting at like 10 fantasy points through three quarters, don't you're, worry. You're like, yeah, don't worry. It's coming. The Bears, 0 1. Take on the Broncos, 0 1. This game's got a pitiful 40 point over under. Gross. The Bears are two and a half point road favorites in this one. Mitch Trubisky, Joe Flacco. Uh, we have two notes on those. Um, Mitch, Mitch's <laughs> note says, no. And Joe Flacco's note says, never. And they are tied at consensus quarterback 25 in the week. And that is all I will say about them. Yes. Bigger question marks remain at the running back position. People want to know what they should do with David Montgomery this week after a very disappointing week one, I, I would say, utilization by Matt Nagy. Well, uh, opportunity. Okay. Maybe. Maybe Matt Nagy saying, uh, I'm going to shred the playbook from week one. I'm coming up with all new stuff for week two. Maybe that means he saw the light and watched the film and said, why did I keep giving the ball to Mike Davis when David Montgomery was looked like the better running back? Do you believe that to be true to the point where you will play David no, Montgomery this no, week? No, I do not. That's uh, just my hopes and dreams. Yeah, okay. At this point, you, I, I believe David Montgomery will be much more involved this week. But you don't bet on that. You don't put that in your roster. You believe it, and you put them on your bench, and you watch and wait because what we believe should or could happen is often not what NFL coaches end up doing. So, you know, that's that's a wait and see with, with David Montgomery. Does Tariq, that mean you would play Tariq Cohen over David Montgomery? I would play Tariq Cohen over David Montgomery because of guaranteed passing work. I am a little concerned with Tariq Cohen simply because – he was a slot wide receiver. He wasn't a running yeah. back this week. He or week last one. week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He and had zero carries. Do you realize that he had he had no carries in the game? I, I'm oh, man. Yeah. I remember a carry. Well, then Did it got called back. Called back or all, something? I'll vet it. But um, I'm, I'm, 
confident yeah, so, that he's right. But here's here's the thing. He was utilized as a slot wide receiver. Correct. But no Anthony carries. Miller was not being, you know, he didn't have he that many healthy. snaps. He yeah. wasn't healthy. So I have concern going forward for Tariq Cohen of, okay, well, Anthony Miller's a better wide receiver than Tariq Cohen. Yeah. So when Anthony Miller is out there playing 60, 70, 80% of snaps, that will have to take away from someone. It's not going to come from Taylor Gabriel. I think it would come from Tariq Cohen. So where he goes, maybe he goes back to the backfield so a little bit more. So does that just screw the backfield up even more then? So it, it's something to keep an eye on. Philip Lindsay, can you play him this week? Yeah, I mean, over, I, I would not play him or Freeman. I would bench both. You, uh, yes, uh, you but, know the Bears gave up six points to fantasy. You know, six fantasy points to running backs last week. They're the Bears. I'm not playing either player because you can't predict snaps. The offense looked really bad. Like this could be one of the worst offenses in football. That's in the range of outcomes, and that's not me saying they will be first week for Joe Flacco, but they could be. Sure, and. You know, I told you, I think Cortland Sutton is going to be the number one drop player next week after being picked up because this is just not a good matchup. The Bears give up 16 fantasy points total to the wide receiver position in week one, and that was against Aaron Rodgers, not Joe Flacco. So, you know, does this defense travel into Denver and do that? I tend to lean on the side of yes. Basically, Allen Robinson. Who are Allen Robinson, I think you play because yes. he was the target. So monster. who do you play out of this game? And outside of Allen Robinson... Is there anyone you really want to play? No. I would flex Emmanuel Sanders. But re but a, a really want to play. I, no, yeah, I, want to play? No. Not against the no. Bears. Yeah. This is that's it's not good. trash. Yeah. So All right, Saints, Rams. This game's in Los Angeles. Both teams want to know. It's got a healthy 52 point over under. Rams are 2 point home favorites. And we get to see Jared Goff come home, Mike. You are confident in yes. Jared Goff? Yes, I am. At home, he's your start of the week. Drew Brees, he's been a lot better in terms of total passing yardage at home than the road. At home, his average, 321 passing yards. This is last year. 217 on the road. So confidence level in Drew Brees traveling into Los Angeles. Confidence to play him as a quarterback one. And I, I, it's game script of the Rams are favored, a 52-point over-under. I don't believe the Saints will be able to just run, run, run. And, and keep up with the Rams. I, I think Breeze will be forced to use that $100 million man a little bit. Todd Gurley, we've talked about him. What do you think? 15 touches over under for Todd Gurley this week. Over. I would go over. So he's startable. you got to play him. Alvin Kamara? Yes. I'll go ahead. I'll, <laughs> I'll think about playing him this week. Yeah, he's a good player. Latavius Murray, though, should you, uh, should you bench him on the road in this game? He was very limited work. In week one, but had the touchdown, which might I, might distort the play. I, I don't think I'd play. I would, would okay. Well, Latavius Murray or Philip Lindsay. I'd take Lindsay. Okay. Would I? Yeah, I would. <laughs> I would. I would. Uh, the wide receivers. Where's the question marks in this game? No, uh, not there's not nothing huge here. You play Michael Thomas. I'm not playing any of the other uh, Saints wide receivers. If they're at home, I'll take the shot on Ted Ginn or Traquan Smith. But on the road, I'm not going to. And then on the Rams side, you play all three of them. Yeah, you play they were Cups, all out Woods, there. Cups. You play uh, – I mean, really, the only two questions in this entire game to me are Malcolm Brown, are you willing to take the shot at – he didn't have that much utilization despite the two touchdowns, and Jared Cook. Jared Cook to me is a question mark because, look, Drew Brees threw it like 700 times, and there were only four targets that went Jared three. Cook's way. Three. Three. So, Jared Cook this week. You probably don't have other options than Jared Cook. I'm fine playing him. But, Jason, it's a revenge oh. game. From those those years. Look, if I played for Jeff Fisher, I'd want revenge. <laughs> I feel like this is such a different team, different location. Not a lot of revenge here. All right. Um, let's move on. Let's talk about the Eagles-Falcons game. This is the Sunday night football game. 52.5 point over under. And... Carson Wentz looked great, Mike. He's your QB three on the week. You're starting him against this Atlanta defense. That is correct. That's a wise decision, I think. <laughs> sure. Matt Thank Ryan you. at home. That's right, everybody. At you home. heard it here first. Yeah, you heard it here. You start Carson Wentz. Here first and only. You know, it was very it was very fun in week one. This is the dynamic of fantasy football that everybody enjoys slash hates. Like Carson Wentz is my guy on the year. Had a great game. Had to play against him. That part hurt. 
mm. Jason had him. So yep. I can rejoice in the performance, but then yeah, he, that, he beat the, me. That part was great. Yeah. Matt Ryan, at home in 2018, he completed 72% of his passes for 296 passing yards per game. I think it's going to be a lot better for Matt Ryan in this one than it was in week one. Julio Agreed. Jones, Calvin Ridley. Do you play those two guys against this Eagles defense? They yes. got torched by Case Keenum in week one. Yes, uh, that's where I was going to go. Case Keenum had a, a pretty solid game, including the breakout of Terry McLaurin. Uh, so I'm going to play both Julio and Calvin. Um, okay, and then on the other side, Alshon Jeffrey, Deshaun Jackson. Do you have a uh, preference between the two? Wow. Uh Right now, our consensus rankings have Jeffrey slightly higher than DJX. But, I mean, they're right there. But it's hard not to play the upside of DJX after what you saw last week. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, I, I feel like Alshon is slightly safer than DJX, but DJX had enough targets where, uh, you know. They were, we, they were also coming back from 17 points. Right. Like that, that's built into the equation of Deshaun Jackson with a huge target game. Not, not that that can't be the new normal, but – it's a, it should be a high scoring game. I mean, yeah. this should be a game where it's back and forth a little bit. Do you play Djax or Gallup? I would play Deshaun Jackson. Really? I yeah. will play. Interesting. Man, I think I play Gallup. What about uh, Djax yeah. or Jarvis Landry? Djax. Yeah. Larry Fitzgerald DJX. or I'd Deshaun Jackson? Definitely Djax there. Jackson. All right. So you. you just, he, d he earned his way into your lineup with a 35-point week one performance. He has literally always been a great fantasy player outside of when he had Jameis Winston as a quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, he was a great fantasy player last year. He was the number, you know, top three performer in week when one. With Ryan Fitzpatrick. With Ryan Fitzpatrick, exactly. Miles Sanders, are we just saying the same things about Miles Sanders this week as we did about David Montgomery, or is it a little bit brighter for Miles? It's a little bit brighter for me because – considering all the things that just went slightly wrong for Miles Sanders, and I'm willing to play him. It's, it's not like Montgomery where I'm afraid to start Montgomery. Willing to play Miles Sanders, but in scenarios where I have a comparable level running back, I'm going to make the pivot. Like I said, I'm playing shady over him this week. Do you believe this will be an offensive explosion in this game? Yes. Yeah, I do. Devonta Freeman, then. You okay playing him? Give him a second chance here yes. after the 50-50 split with Edo Smith in week yeah. one? I'll I give him another chance, but this is he's, – he's one of those players where in week two, somebody who, who's really on watch, it's Freeman. I heard uh, several people talk about Austin Hooper this week, that they're bought in after seeing you know a significant amount of targets last week. They did come in garbage time. I Was it garbage time? Was it trying to come back in the Minnesota game? I'm not sure what the line it's, is. but It's trying to come back – yeah, but like Austin Hooper will be involved when the team is trying to come back. Last year, the Eagles were really good against the tight end. That you know it wasn't indicative of uh, week one. Uh, they were not that great, but I mean, not when you've got Vernon Davis jumping yeah. over you. Right. I like all the waiver guys more than Austin Hooper. You this do, week. Yeah. you do. Assuming Mark Andrews plays as one of those contingents. I forgot that was one of my bold predictions on the year that they would have. Four players in the top twelve at the position. Uh, the yeah. Falcons with uh, uh, yeah Hooper can like Hooper's the one that you've got to fight his way there. Hooper can easily finish as the tight end twelve. Freeman with, is the one who has to fight. I know his way right there now at this it's, point. it is it is Freeman. So uh, Monday night we get to experience the Sam Darnold less Jets. Darnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> down with mono uh, behind the bleachers, hanging out with Maddie Snapback. Is Jay Cutler involved Probably. in this like, situation? There, there is definitely a bowling alley and, and arcade games involved and bubblegum. We were saying this yesterday, like it feels so weird because this is like this is a high school disease. Yeah. I want, I, I want detectives on this. I want it tracked down. Where did Darnold get his mono? He is. I don't know if we want to know that. Still, I, I need to know. It's not just one. I've upgraded. I need to know. He got I, it in high school, probably. He's only, what, 22 years old? Yeah, he's a little bitty baby boy, <laughs> and he's he's going to have to, you know, did you see the press conference where Adam Gaze? No. Well, oh, my Oh, goodness. I can only imagine Adam where he, Gaze. Where he talked about the mono? Where he. Was uh, he frustrated, Jason? Oh, he was beyond frustrated. His head was down, his shoulders <laughs> up on the podium, like he's. He's like this, just going, uh, yeah. I, I forget. What's Darnold's numbers? He's 17. No, uh, I don't know. Anyways. I'm not good with the numbers. Yeah. Andy, so. 14. Okay. So he's like, 
Uh, 14's not going to play this he week. He won't even name no, him? No, he didn't even name him. He's like, 14's not playing this week. What a butthole. He's got uh, mono. <laughs> yeah, like, seriously. I mean, these, these, really? Like, I get it, though, because you've got, like, he's got to be frustrated with, like, his, his debut. You That's don't have fun. your quarterback. It's like the Jay Gruden situation. You can never find the guy. But to dehumanize him to a number. I would be super pissed because, like, look. That's I how know, a lot of players get referred to. They're numbered. I I'm know not that mono is a real thing. Yeah. But, like, you get, it doesn't feel like it, you though. get sleepy. <laughs> it's like, come on. Right, which is not – I mean, it's not the get truth. Get to work. The truth of the matter is is you really can't play with the side effects of what mono produces in an athlete. Yeah. But – He's if he gets chicken, weight. if he gets chicken pox after this, <laughs> we're in trouble. But the real truth is now you're in a really tough situation with the upside of Robbie Anderson. This game has a bunch of question marks for the Jets in general. Lev Bell's banged up, you know, but the MRI came back positive. He played 71 of 71 snaps. It's pretty good. Wow. All you time Monty Hughes. <laughs> Anyone who was Mr. B hole didn't B hole that situation, did he? No, no, he didn't. 71 of 71. Baker Mayfield, is this a bounce back game for Baker? Yeah, yeah. I, look, I, I know I bodied the Browns as far as I think they were all overdrafted ADP wise. I think that's correct, but this is a get right game. This is a game going on Monday Night Football, primetime Baker, and now you're playing a team that is probably has its head down a little bit, losing its star quarterback. They've lost Quincy. They've 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 had a real rough two weeks here. So I think this is a get right game for the Browns. So Beckham's in your lineup, Jarvis, not as much. Is he a flex option this year? Yeah, week? flex, wide receiver three. Now, uh, do we have – Brooks, can you effort this? Because I haven't seen the very latest. But Dontrell Hilliard – He's still not practicing. Still not practicing with a concussion. This means more opportunity for Nick Chubb. He was already on the field 50 of 71 snaps. Just wasn't a good game. I mean, part of that was – And the, and the Titans have a really Hilliard. good defense. And, yeah, Hilliard was out there quite a bit. Well, I'm saying, no, Hilliard got his concussion, so like, I think that led to Nick Chubb's involvement, which is great news for him in the passing game. All right. Uh, I think this is a get-right game for Cleveland. Their fan base should hope so. The only wide receiver that I would consider playing would be Jamison Crowder just because I you know, I don't expect them to be airing it deep with Who, Trevor Who's Sinead. that again? Crowder. Oh, I'm sorry. It's pronounced Crowder. How do we not give him credit after a 17-target game? With his nickname. It's just been so long. Because it's it was just – it still felt gross. Because not well, not, not hitting 100 yeah, yards How do you receiving? catch that many passes and you don't get 100 receiving yards? All right, we've got some injury updates since the show started. Sterling Shepard is out. Uh, Evan. Hello, Evan Ingram. <laughs> Mark Andrews. Uh, could you – sneaky play, Cody Latimer. DFS lineups? Uh, possibly, but he was also dealing with injury this sneaky week. Sneaky play, Evan Ingram. <laughs> Can Super I go with? sneaky. Wow. Uh, Mark Andrews is expected to play on Sunday. Just a rest day today, Jason, so take a deep breath, but not too deep where you start coughing and then we have to put you in a home or something like that. You don't have mono, do you? I hope Oh, not. man, did you give it to him? Oh, Le <laughs> goodness <laughs> gracious. Uh, Lev Bell. Someone needs to check on this. Expected to practice on Saturday. That's good news for Monday night. Dante Pettis said his body's back to normal following the groin injury. Let's hope his snap count goes away from, I don't know, two. Let's go up from two, Dante. I think he gets ten snaps. Well, th that is an incredible bet. Mm. I won't take a water bet on that one. Ballers on a Budget, presented by FanDuel. Very nice, Mike. All right, Ballers on a Budget, presented by FanDuel, our favorite budget picks. Now, the way this works, by the way, you got to get into the Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series. Last week, it was a mad dash. They had it capped at 500. If you didn't get in, you didn't get in, and that's FanDuel.com slash Ballers. Uh, if you finish first through fifth, we give you a DFS pass for free, and you... If Let's you, be honest, Andy. Yeah. If they finish first through fifth, they probably are already using the DFS Ooh, pass. Ooh, yeah, chicken or egg there. Mm. And you can win a chance to come out here to Phoenix, all expenses paid, hang out with us, see a show. So uh, get in on the leaderboard series. My pick this week, 
Matt Breida. Oh yeah. At a sneaky. Oh yeah. Fifty six hundred dollars. That's fantastic. Uh, hey, that's, he's just got a great opportunity this week at Cincinnati. You just saw Chris Carson go to town on them, and Breida is just a good player. And with no Tevin Coleman, his workload's guaranteed. To me, that's a bargain at 5600 I'll jump in here. I'm going – I'm starting at the quarterback position. I'm playing Derek Carr, only $6,600. He's at home against the Chiefs. There are basically six starters who are cheaper than Derek Carr, and it, it, which is wild because Derek Carr has a huge opportunity here to finish as – as a quarterback one and that's a that's a bargain for what you're gonna get out of him that's a good bargain and if you want to stack him with mine my pick is Tyrell Williams at 5900 look if Tyrell Williams ends, ends up with a good game then Derek Carr ends up with a good game that's fair you save a ton of money you go in there and put put money towards your Alvin Kamara's and Zeke exactly. Elliott's and you know have those monster games that you can't usually afford because you're saving with some of our budget picks. So make sure you get in at FanDuel.com slash ballers. If you want even more help, the Fantasy Footballers DFS podcast, the new episode dropped today, hosted by Jake Seeley with Chris Meady and Joe Holka. It's a it's a fantastic listen. Their knowledge is certainly top of the game. So, so if you're, you're playing DFS and you want a little more help, check it out, Fantasy Footballers DFS podcast. We want to thank today's sponsor, the studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. Yesterday, an Odell Beckham Jr. signed jersey went for $90 at pristineauction.com. That's a Cleveland Browns jersey. Not no Giants one. Yeah, Beckham in week one, even though there wasn't a big game for that offense, same smooth Odell Beckham running yep. routes. He's going to have some big plays this year. So uh, get in on the hundreds of daily auctions at pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS when you sign up. You get 5 bucks towards your first auction purchase. All right, that is it for us. Hope you enjoyed the show. Hope you enjoyed the week of shows. Again, Sunday Live, Mike will be live an hour before game time, so tune in there. Yep. And um, we'll good. catch you next time. Yeah, good luck. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And a reminder, Simply Safe makes home security so easy. No contract, no fees, no fine print. You don't want those hidden fees, Jason. You those are the worst. You, you just don't want those. They're disgusting. They're Do not want. They're hiding in the corner. Out of for, nowhere. For 15 bucks a month, you get 24-7 professional monitoring throughout your home. We have it here at the studio. And you can visit simplysafe.com slash footballers. And you'll get free shipping and a 60-day risk-free trial. That is Simply safe.com slash footballers simply safe.com slash footballers